You're listening to Real COVID Stories with Ivy Lane. The media numbers don't show the full story. Millions of people around the world have been sick for months and months on end. This podcast serves to share their stories, real stories of how people's lives have changed. Stories of the daily struggles, the prejudice, the pain, the triumph, the funny and more. Hi, I'm Ivy Lane and welcome to the first episode of Real COVID Stories. This is just going to be a very short introduction to the reason I've decided to start this podcast. Um, So just a little bit of history about me. I first got sick um, the second week of March um, with um, a sore throat and flu-like symptoms um, and I... For someone like me with a holistic health background, um, I can normally beat any cold or flu very, very quickly. Um, You know, I'll take supplements and uh, antivirals and homeopathic remedies, and I can usually clear, you know, even some of the worst flus within a few days. Um, So it became very clear to me quickly and early on that this was not a normal uh, normal virus. Um, I fought it really, really hard, and it just kept getting worse. Um, So... I was unable to be tested because back then there was a global shortage on testing supplies. Um, and But, however, I was very fortunate to have a doctor who, although didn't diagnose me with coronavirus, treated it like we did, like I did. Um, and also I'm very fortunate to have a lot of, um, to know a lot of uh, health practitioners um, who looked at my symptoms and were able to, you know, who recognised my symptoms as, as COVID-19. Um, so I was very lucky in the treatment and the support that I received. Um, I was very frustrated about not getting a test, um, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't eligible. Um, I didn't fit the testing criteria. Um, but as my illness progressed, it went up and down, up and down. It was um, very difficult for me uh, mentally that was one of the hardest parts of the illness for me because every time I thought that I was beating it um, 24 hours later I would plummet into another symptom and it 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 was scary Um, like I said I can normally get on top of anything and I could not get on top of this it was beating me and um yeah, the, the, the unpredictability of the virus um, is terrifying. You know, one, one minute it's, it's a cold-like symptoms or a flu-like symptoms. And, you know, by week three I had I started getting um, breathing difficulties, which I've never had in my life. Um, and that's when I actually outsourced my care. Um, I outsourced it to, I, I contacted a Chinese doctor who was able to prescribe um, and drop off, (laughs) so grateful that he was able to drop them off at my house, Um, herbs that suited my current state in my lungs. And I was able to keep the infection out of my lungs largely. Um, But then came the the heart attack-like symptoms and the neurological damage, and that was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Um, But after maybe two, three months in, then I read an article at the Guardian newspaper by a um, professor in the UK, and I forget his name, um, but he was talking about long-haul um, COVID. And I realised that I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't the only one in the world. Um, took me a while longer to find a support group that I was accepted into, and that was a huge, huge relief for me. Um, even though I have, I'm doing a lot better than a lot of other people, and I think that's because of the... Um, because of the access to treatment that I do have, um, you know, I'm doing well, but I am, I am still struggling. And what I found in, in joining a support group on Facebook was that many people are not being believed, especially there's a, there's a whole heap of us who haven't, who weren't eligible for testing at the crucial time. There's a small window where the test will actually come back positive um, where it's most accurate. And if you get tested later, later, um, like I did, it's outside the effectiveness of the test. Um, and so there's a lot of people being faced with prejudice. People don't believe them. Doctors don't believe what's going on. If they, if they don't 
look into this, the symptom progression and, and understand the way that coronavirus invades every part of the body, it comes across like people are being hypochondriacs, that they're just full of anxiety, uh, that they're making it up for attention. Um, you know, I've been told that, you know, you just had a really bad cold and you're just, you're just you know, wanting attention, you're not going to die. Um, and to be honest, there were times where I wondered if I was going to live. Um, so I um, decided to start this podcast to to give a voice to people who have felt silence, who haven't been able to explain effectively to their friends, to their doctors, um, to their families what's actually going on for them. And that's why I wanted to get these stories out, um, largely just so people can feel heard, but also um, so that we can share information so that as new people get this virus, um, they can feel less alone. Um, and that, you know, for, for those of us who got sick really early in, in the, the pandemic, isolation was a huge factor. And when you're feeling isolated and not supported, you, you know, you're more likely to get sicker. You know, support cannot be underestimated. Um, I'll also be interviewing some doctors and health practitioners that I know um, who are treating COVID patients um, and gaining some great insights. So coming first, we'll have a few interviews of people who've had coronavirus, who are still struggling with coronavirus. Um, then I'll be having some doctors and I'll mix and match it up. Um, it is very much a work in progress. It is very much for me to help with my cognitive issues you know having to work on something on a project is or giving myself a project to work on um is really helping my brain function which is something that i'm still struggling with um so i'm aiming gonna aim to try and get episodes out at the same time every week but it's not gonna always be possible because i don't know where my brain's working <laughs> when it's not so it's pretty much i do what i can when i can um, but so I, you know, would appreciate everyone's patience in that. And I really hope that you enjoy the stories that are to come. And if you know anybody going through coronavirus or who's feeling isolated, maybe you know someone who isn't getting support, please share this with them. Um, and I will, you can always contact me on Facebook at Ivy Lang. Um, and I can point them to the direction where they can get more support. Thank you. Thank you.